This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Monday, October 11th, wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with a guy who has indefinitely banned Spuddy Buddy from the BYU SN set, Jerem Jordan. Listen, Spuddy Buddy, we let him back on. Because we heard there's a sponsorship yep. for the Idaho State BYU game. Mm-hmm. Hashtag potatoes. So, yeah, that's our bad. It wasn't BYU's fumbles. It wasn't Hank Bachmeyer. Nope. It was our fault. Yep. That we brought Spuddy Buddy back. Put him on the set. And, and Put the, him on the center of the desk. And the Hank Bachmeyer. You know, it was just all our fault. We're taking that L. BYU's 5-0. and L. We're 0-1. It's incredible <laughs> what our words and actions with a stuffed animal can do to impact the game that we thought we didn't yeah. have a direct role in, Jim. I didn't think that we believed Easy. in voodoo as a people, but maybe we do. Incredible. Maybe we I do. was told never to underestimate the power that we have in Studio B yesterday while discussing Hank Bachmeyer, among <laughs> other things. Okay? <laughs> nice jersey, by the way. Hey, thank you. Got to represent. Who, who is that? My no, guy, I'm, I'm Dax Milne. He made his first catch for the Washington oh, yeah, football dude. team yesterday, and what a catch it was. It was only six yards, yes, but he dragged his toes. Had that toe-drag swag. He also drew a pass interference penalty with precise route. It was good to see Dax Milne playing for the Washington Dax football and team. Dax and waxing, man. Let's go, man. He's in awesome. the NFL. How cool is yes. that? Walk on at BYU. Now D- playing he in did? the NFL. Yes. Another Dennis Pitta scenario? No, Washington's not going to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> The story's about The light still might go out on Washington, though. <laughs> I think that's a possibility. Here's your show lineup. You may have heard. BYU football lost. What? What happened? And what's next? What are the Cougars playing for now? The Independence Bowl? Nothing! Or is there something more in the big picture? Oh. We'll address all of those questions with ESPN's Trevor Maddich on another loaded edition of Maddich Monday, plus BYU women's soccer and volleyball shan't be overlooked They continue to roll through teams at a ridiculous level. Which team impressed most over the weekend? Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Number 10, BYU loses to Boy State, 26-17. No thanks to four giveaways and two turnovers on down. Jaron Hall returned uh, after missing two games, 22 of 37, 302, a touchdown and a pick. Gunnar Romney had four catches for 102 yards. BYU falls to 19 in the AP poll. Oh. And nine spots. Plays at 5-1 Baylor. Saturday, who is just outside the top 25. He's still a top 20 team. Interesting. Zach Wilson and the New York Jets lose to the Atlanta Falcons in London, 27 to 20. Rough start again for Wilson. Better fourth quarter. That's kind of been the trend as he finishes 19 for 32, 192 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. Taysom Hill took a brutal and what many analysts are calling a dirty hit to the helmet on an incomplete pass. He was able to get up himself, get on the cart to be taken off the field with a concussion for Adam Schefter. We hope Taysom's all right. In some uplifting news, Brady Christensen made his first start for the Carolina Panthers on the offensive line, unfortunately, in a 21-18 loss against the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, I don't actually care if the team wins. I just okay. want them to do well. That's great. Team wins, that's great. That's so cool. Brady's yeah. making his yeah. first start. Dax yeah, is playing. Awesome. Let's go. Mo Williams had 13 carries, two receptions, 65 all-purpose yards for the Lions. Fred Warner had nine tackles, seven solo for the Niners. Daniel Sorensen, four tackles, three solos for the Chiefs. And as mentioned, Dax Milne played and got his first catch in the NFL for what? Number nine BYU women's volleyball sweeps Gonzaga on Saturday in impressive fashion. BYU has won its last 27 consecutive sets. BYU's next match, road test, and a significant one against a good Loyola Marymount team Thursday, October 14th, 10 Eastern. Number 20, women's soccer beat up San Diego 6-0 thanks to a brace from Michaela Coulihan. Game winner was an own goal off a corner by the Toreros in the 12th minute. Cougar Sos Pacific Saturday night on the BYU TV app. All right, Whitney Orton and Connor Mance named the West Coast Conference Runners of the Month for September. This marks back-to-back seasons 
in which both Mance and Orton have received the WCC's monthly award. They are competing at the highest of levels. And Elijah Bryant had 35 points in two games for the Milwaukee Bucks in preseason action against the Thunder and Nets. Brandon Davies playing with uh, Barcelona, eight points, four rebounds, and an assist in a 17-point win for his team. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. BYU loses at home 26-17 to unranked Boise State. The big question now is, what happened and what's next let's address the first question there jerem what happened to byu against boise state you really fumbled the ball too much if BYU fumbles the ball once and maybe even twice they probably, probably still, win. still win but what we learned in this game is that hey turnover margin really matters tyler algier fumbles the ensuing kickoff lapini katoa fumbles and on those two drives boise state produces it's only two touchdowns, okay? 47 yards. 47 yards to get 14 Unbelievable. Points. So that was the difference in the game. Then Lopini Katoa fumbles a second time in the red zone. That was tough to swallow. BYU's down nine. Uh, Jaron Hall throws it up on fourth down. Uh, that one was like a garbage interception. Like the game was, you know, it was a nine-point game at that point. So, listen, BYU loses this game because it turns the ball over too much. We've learned now after that a valuable lesson to remember is obviously turnover margin is important, but BYU probably would have lost one or two of the other close margin games, especially in the first three, eight, nine, ten, eight, the first four games of margin, had BYU not been a plus one or plus two. By game, plus one, two, two, one, two, uh, and then minus four. So margin really matters. Like, truly, like, great teams can overcome some of that with just, like, great offense or great defense. And BYU still had an but, opportunity in the fourth quarter, amazingly. I think BYU is in the good to very good place, right? Um, I said last week I thought BYU is probably going to lose two games this year still. I just didn't think it would be that one. Sure, um, sure. This Saturday is certainly a losable game at Baylor, so BYU's got to bring it. Got to show up with a margin. Even if you're plus one or two, you still might lose. If the other team's better than you, sometimes you need an equalizing factor. Like in basketball, it's, it used to be, oh, if we can just make more threes than those guys, we'll be all right. That's sort of turnover margin in football. So BYU's really got to take care of the ball. The last two losses for BYU, dating back to the start of last year, um, are games in which Tyler Algier fumbled okay? yep. and lost a fumble. Yep. He doesn't really do that very much. But when he loses a fumble, it's a big deal, apparently, for BYU. Those are the two losses from the start of last year. Lopini Kato is way better than the dude that fumbles twice, so that was disappointing. Um, but it, there are other things in this game. BYU's inability to convert on a fourth down a couple times. Red zone execution was troubling. Penalties take at the, the worst points, time. Take, yes, yes. And those are self-inflicted. So this was frustrating. But um, and, and we'll chronicle this later in, in uh, the program. At 5-1, and one, and now ranked 19th, it's not the end of the world. BYU was not going to go undefeated. Come on. BYU wasn't going to go undefeated. We were hoping for kind of a one-loss season. It's probably a two- or three-loss season. Um, I hope it's not a four, right? But BYU's got to bounce back because guess what? You're playing three power fives in a row now. Yep. Okay? It doesn't get you, any easier. We're, we're, the front half of the schedule's done. The back half is there. Four power five games, three on the road. And uh, arguably the toughest game on the schedule is this Saturday. Maybe it takes the frustration and hurt from a Boise State loss, minus four in the turnover margin, bad penalties, ugly game, to get BYU focused to go and beat Baylor. Because if BYU beats Baylor and they're 6-1, and one, then all of a sudden are Amazing. they ahead of schedule again? BYU's already – to me, BYU's two games ahead of schedule. There you go. Like, like three and three would have been a thing we might have taken. You know what I mean? Four and two, certainly better. Five and one, silly, which we'll, we'll dive into later. Like, five and one and now what? Yeah. I had several people say, Spencer, how, how did BYU lose to Boise State? It's pretty simple. You're minus four in the turnover margin? I don't care if BYU's playing awful Arizona. If BYU was minus four against would Arizona in Las Vegas, they absolutely would have lost that game. Yeah, They definitely wouldn't have beaten Utah or Arizona State or South Florida being minus four in the turnover margin. Yes. South Florida, BYU's plus one, and it's an eight-point game, by the way. 
<laughs> like that might have been a loss too. Can you so, imagine BYU turning the ball over four times, being minus four in Logan against Utah State? No. The Aggies in that crowd, they run away with that game. And and minus four is deceptive. I mean, you sorry, can, minus three. It, minus three until that kind of like I call it a garbage pick. Well, BYU's not only that, four. Jerem, but like. BYU turns the ball over. They get a little impatient late in the first half. After the two fumbles, they go for it on fourth down in their own territory. And Boise State, State tacks on another three. So you could argue, yeah. If like, you, punt the ball. It's a seven-point game at halftime. If you count the uh, if you count turnover on downs as turnovers, which technically they are not, but let's just throw them in there. Minus six? Minus six. Oh, boy. Yeah. Boise State didn't go for it on fourth, I don't think, right? No. Well, they did once. No, yes. no, no, they didn't. They didn't. You're okay. right. Yeah. So they didn't have to. It's tough. And listen, Bury's a good team to very good, somewhere in that range. I think they're probably on the higher side of very good. But you ha- and turnovers are interesting, Spencer. Sometimes those are like absolutely skilled. Yes, they're not all exactly. Sometimes they're lucky though. Like if you throw me a pass and it tips off my hand, and the other team grabs it. Bad luck. That's bad luck. That's not skill from the other team. But if that's, you punch the ball out, that's skill. So in this game. Th- like three skilled Boise State turnovers. They forced those. They got them. But certainly if you're BYU, you're like, we need to hold yeah. on to them. Punch the ball, helmet it on the ball. It was 10 nothing, and BYU scores on the first two drives, and it's dry. It starts to rain, and all of a sudden, this combination of maybe BYU thought it'd come easy, slash the ball is wet. All of a sudden, that second quarter undid everything for BYU. The game unraveled in the second quarter. Yet, there was still time to win that game, and BYU didn't do it. Yes. Because BYU turned it over again. BYU uh, defensively didn't stop the run. Like, all of a sudden, Boise State can run with its backups. This was certainly disappointing. I'm not holistically and generally overly disappointed with how the season's gone. In fact, I'm very excited still. But I know it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow yes. because you're 5-0 and and you're thinking anything is possible. It took four turnovers for Boise State to beat this BYU team. It took that. Okay, me going in, I was like, man, it would take something drastic for Boise State to be able to beat BYU. And it happened. And it does happen in sports. That's why, like, okay, at the beginning of last week, I was going, treat them like they're 5-0, right? By the end of the week, I was convinced BYU was going to win by double digits. It's like two scores. And if they don't turn it over four times, they will. But they did. But they did. And Boise State is, uh, you know, a a good team. They're 3-3. Sure. We talked about, hey, this team's still good. How motivated will they be? Hey, I don't know how motivated they were. I can't gauge that. They were 58%. My, I don't know. Hey. But BYU turned it over. In sports, the best team in a one-game scenario doesn't always win. In football, they do. I believe that in football, the best team wins in one game. But in a series in basketball, no. Now, wait a second. You think Boise State they played BYU in a neutral field, again, that they're a better team than BYU? No, but I think that football in one game, the best team wins. You don't accidentally win a football game. <sighs> I think in basketball, you can accidentally win a basketball game. See, if, I, if BYU and Boise State played 10 more times, I'd pick yeah. BYU to win 10 out of 10 times yes, again. in 10, but they're not playing 10. They played the one, and I, I just think the game is different because it's so physical and it's so team-oriented. In basketball and even, like, volleyball, you can, you can, like, accidentally, crazily upset someone one time. That's why the NCAA tournament's so fun. It's one game, but, like, the NBA, sure. it's like the best team <laughs> yeah, wins yeah, that series. Yeah, to my series. point, like, yeah. the best team will win the series. Like, the best team doesn't always win one game, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, it, the best team yes. does not always win one game. Texas A&M is not better than Alabama. Correct, but the best team wins on that day. Like, it Man. happened, yeah. And it stinks because BYU, we believe that when the dust settles on the season, that BYU is a better team than Boise State. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, the team that plays the best on that day wins the game. The best team overall, I feel I, like, does not win. My point is you can't accidentally win a football game. Sure you can. When you have the ball given to you four times? It wasn't given. They earned those fumbles. Oh. Fumble, like you earn a fumble. Okay. Did, Arizona, did Merlin Robertson give it away, right? No, Tyler Algier earned that fumble, right? Yeah. I think fumbles are different than interceptions. Okay. Unless you're Malik Moore and you make it like one-handed lefty at Utah State. That was awesome. Our question of the day. What are the five, or where are you rather, in the five stages of grief after losing (laughs) to Boise State as a BYU fan? Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Let's hear from you, BYUSN, in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At CL underscore living starts us off on Twitter, says... Bargaining acceptance? I guess if I had to choose between losses, either to Utah or Boise State, I'd prefer a loss to Boise. 
BYU got the boot. And what did or what trophy did Boise win? The Spuddy Buddy? They already have it. They can have it. We're good. At 3M Mickey. I went through all four stages before, but now I'm at acceptance. Bring on Baylor. Let's get a win in Big 12 country. Hashtag go Cougs. Are you overly upset? Okay. BYU beat Utah and is going to the Big 12. It's hard to be long-term bugged. We're short-term bugged. We'll get over it. Sure. I, honestly, I'm I'm kind of already to that stage of like, okay, it's all, oh, yeah. it's, it's about Baylor now. It's about three power yeah. fives in a row now. I couldn't even let that settle in because I called soccer. So mentally, I had to just go to that. Sometimes that's an advantage. Yeah. yeah. Coming up, are we surprised that BYU dropping nine spots in the AP? And ESPN's Trevor Mattis believes BYU can still have a special season like New Year's Six special. Oh, we're still going there? This is BYU Sports Nation. Okay. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Coordinator's Corner is on deck. Ed Lamb and Aaron Roderick in the house with Greg Rubel coming up at 1 Eastern time on the BYU TV app. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton. That is Jerem Jordan. Joining us now, as he does every Monday on the show in the fall, is the fabulous Trevor Maddich, ESPN College Football Insider and Analyst, BYU national champion. He's here to accept us, or I guess let us go through the five levels of grief as we try and accept this BYU Boise State loss. Trevor, it's great to have you with us. Albeit, I wish BYU were still unbeaten. You like his jersey? Uh, I do like it. Dax Milne, Washington football team, huge catch against the Saints yesterday. Let's go. Let's Absolutely. Go. I like to sport the colors there. That's good. And by the way, thank you for calling me fabulous, but I would just like to, in my professional humility, note that only my hair is truly fabulous. <laughs> well, you are an Emmy Award winning broadcaster. Okay? We can't even get a regional Emmy. You're getting a national Emmy. Okay? <laughs> Just, just, Jordan, just a shrug. Jordan shoulder just, shrug. Just a Jordan 92, shrug. 93 final. Okay. I'll let you say it, not me. Fair enough. <laughs> Trevor, uh, we'll talk about Dax Milne uh, in just a little bit, but first let's get to BYU-Boise State. The Cougars are minus four in turnover margin. It's hard to look beyond anything besides that as the reason they lost this game. What do you take away from the Broncos and Cougars as BYU falls to 5-1 and one on the season? That, you know, you look at how they lost – and it was mistakes, mistakes that they are, are usually not making in games this year. I mean, this has been a very clean team. And it's been the turnovers, 
uh, against Boise, and it was the penalties, and especially when the penalties happened. That's what cost them. There were other things that happened that you've got to give a lot of credit to Boise for, like their last touchdown drive. I mean, the, the plays that were made by Khalil Shakir, the receiver, and then the quarterback just making terrific throw. Those were great plays. When you look at the goal line stand, um, where BYU had the ball on the three-yard line, I think, and they couldn't punch it in. They went for it on fourth down and didn't make it. Uh, that, that's good defense every bit as, as much as it might be something on BYU. But when you look at the turnovers, it was astonishing. And, and really, the fact that they hadn't lost a fumble all year made that first fumble uh, just kind of borderline shocking. And Boise got the ball, punched it right in from inside the 25. Ensuing kickoff, BYU fumbles again. Boise gets the ball inside the 25, punch it in for a touchdown. And those are the only two touchdowns that Boise scored. And I think that's important to remember because as bad as this feels and the fact that it is a loss, as disjointed as BYU seemed to be at times, they still outplayed Boise State for the most part on both sides of the ball except for those key mistakes. Yeah, and those ended up costing BYU the game, as we've talked about. So we look at the first six games, and now it's obvious that because BYU took care of the ball and was able to force a couple of turnovers, they were able to win some games that maybe if the margins even, who knows, maybe BYU doesn't win those games. So margin really matters in this one. And now BYU is going to Baylor, a team that's high-flying, and obviously the connection with Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateos. BYU is going to have to take care of the ball in this one and perhaps even be positive in margin to win it. It's another big game for BYU, who still have a lot to play for, it feels like. Let's see, that's part of the way that good teams play. They don't miss assignments. They hold on to the ball. They don't commit too many penalties that are, you know, dumb penalties. You know, I mean, false starts and things like that for the most part. And BYU won in part because they're a good team and that's what good teams do. So so I, I, I look at this more as a, a anomaly than I do that BYU had to have the turnovers to win the games that they had. That's why they won the games. I mean, look at Alabama, for goodness sake. Against Texas A&M, they lost because of a, a parade of missed assignments. And that's not Alabama. It's not how they play, but that's how they played that day. And so it's not unique to BYU. Uh, and we've talked all year during this winning streak about how these are tough teams to beat. I mean, even Utah State, tough team to beat. They've got a really, really good offense. And that BYU fans can think about undefeated season because that's really fun. But about the players and the coaches be focused on the task at hand because there's there's still a lot of, of tricky games going forward that they could lose if they don't play clean. Baylor is running the ball really well. They're throwing the ball fine. They've got a, a very aggressive defense, one of the best defensive mind trusts in all of college football. And you mentioned uh, Jeff Grimes, the former BYU offensive coordinator, and Eric Mateos, former offensive line coach. These are guys that know this BYU defensive scheme intimately because they practiced against it. They were in meetings with the coaches talking about it, about what works, what doesn't, what they hope defenses don't do. And more importantly, if things aren't working, what will be the adjustments that the defense of BYU will make? And so that throws a lot of questions into game planning going forward. And will they get more uh, uh, complex BYU during the week. I kind of think they'll just do what they do best and force force Baylor to beat them. But if they're going to force Baylor to beat them, they need to be holding onto the football and not committing penalties. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. So I'm looking across uh, Twitter and the national pundits after BYU's loss to Boise State. Brett McMurphy, Chris Vanini, among others, uh, Pete Thamel, all kind of in agreement now that, well, BYU lost a game, so New Year's Six uh, potential is totally out of the reality. And I'm looking at what BYU has remaining in the schedule and thinking, okay, if BYU, hypothetically speaking, went 6-0 and on the back six and had a 7-0 and record against Power 5 teams, would they really be out of any New Year's Six consideration? Trevor, where do you stand in that conversation? You know, Spencer, this crazy season leaves nothing out of the question with just one loss, nothing. I mean, who'd have thought that Clemson would not be ranked, right, in the month of October, which was the case in the most recent AP poll. I didn't look uh, today, but that's the case. Who'd have thought that? that that's crazy. Who would have thought that um, Alabama would have had so many missed assignments that would have lost at an unranked Texas A&M. That's just, it's crazy stuff. And so you know, we're in a year where there's a lot of chaos up at the top. And a lot of those teams at the top still have to play each other. BYU still has, a, well, what is it, four or five power five teams yet to play. They have to go to Baylor. They have to go to USC. They have to play Washington State and Virginia. Those are, those are all tough outs. 
And speaking from a big picture standpoint, if they win all of those games, they might be able to get back up into the top 12. And that's not out of the question. And once again, that's for fans to think about. It's reasonable to expect that BYU is good enough to pull it off if they play clean every single game. But from a standpoint of the players and coaches, that's not something that they are thinking about in any way. They're thinking about Baylor and Baylor only. You almost wonder if there's some middle ground because to go from New Year's Six possibility to Independence Bowl, that seems like a massive gap there. Um, but in terms of motivation, obviously being independent, BYU's kind of used to, okay, once we lose once, the che- season's kind of different. But it feels like because of this schedule, and you mentioned it, seven power fives, that'd still be a chance, it feels like. Like if BYU's sitting there at 12th and un- uh, you know undefeated except for the Boise State game, maybe they got a shot. But like you said, it's going to be tough. So what do you anticipate this team can do in the back half of the season now that we've hit the midway point? I think, well, can they win out? The answer is yes. They, they, they can win out. They have a chance to beat every team left on their schedule. I'm, I was worried about Boise State. I'm very worried about Baylor. But BYU needs to play like they played in the first five games, which is to say on top of their game. It will help that Jaron Hall now is a game back from his injury. He didn't really look like himself in this game. He didn't cost them this game. He did a lot of really good things, and BYU outgained Boise State by quite a bit. But Jaron Hall didn't look like the Jaron Hall that we knew from earlier in the season, and I think that was partly because he's coming back from that injury, didn't have the practice that he needed to have, and I think it might have still bothered him a little bit because against Boise, we didn't see him take off and run as often or as explosively as we've seen him when he's healthy. And so another week now might allow him to elevate that quarterback position, and that will be key to winning this game. It will also be key that they will have to get the passing game going because the running game is going to be awfully tough to lean on against Baylor. They have a pretty stout defense. They'll still try to run. They'll still pound it, but it'll be a little bit tough. So if they get past Baylor, then what happens? Well, then they get a little bit more healthy. Some guys on defense are getting more healthy. You've got James Empey with another game under his belt. You've got Jaron Hall, hopefully stays healthy. It's a little bit better. And all of a sudden, we might be able to see this team get back to the the peak of what they were capable of uh, earlier in the season, or at least closer to it. Losing Keenan Peely at linebacker is always going to be really, really bad. And that's something we always need to remember about this team and how they're overcoming that for the most part. But, you know, what, what are they capable of? They're capable of winning every game, each individual game, but only if they play at their best and they start to get some people back from injury. Trevor Maddich of ESPN on BYU Sports Nation. Let's focus in a little bit more on Baylor and specifically uh, what you brought up, the connection that Baylor has to BYU with former offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes and former offensive line coach Eric Mateos. Fans are very interested in how that might create an advantage for Baylor and knowing what Jeff Grimes is likely to do as an offensive coordinator, how that might create an advantage for the BYU defense. Is it a wash, Trevor? Who has an advantage in this scenario of being very familiar with each other because you've exchanged some coaches? Baylor has the advantage, and it's an important advantage. A lot of people think that when coaches or players go to a a team that you now have to play against, it's all about the calls. You'll make a call, you're calling audible, and they'll know exactly what you're doing. They'll know what the hand signals are. The problem is the defense can't rely on those signals and those audibles and things because they've got to figure that you're going to change them. And then at the key moment, you're going to call red, which normally means we're going to run the ball to the right. And you end up throwing a screen to the left just to fool them while they all take off to what they thought the call was going to be. So as a defense, you can't really rely on those calls. Um, What gives them an advantage is understanding the strengths and weaknesses of individual players. Offensive linemen, for example. You know, if you know from practice that an offensive lineman has a problem with this particular move, you coach your guy to make that move all the time. I had a problem, a move that I couldn't stop the entire national championship year, a pass rush move. And it was one of the guys in the practice squad figured this out. And (laughs) man, I could never stop him. It was a half spin. So I'm playing center and I put my hands up. He spins. I slide in front of that spin, but it's a half spin. He spins back the other way really fast. And I was never able to stop that move. And I was just hoping that nobody figured that out in the games, <laughs> right? And nobody did figure that out in the games. And in the NFL, nobody did that either. So whew, good thing that guy wasn't playing it for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, right? And so 
So this is where the advantage lies, because now those guys will know what the strengths are, what the weaknesses are, and how they can attack individual players. They can look at defensive backs, for example, and they can say, okay, if you stem your out a little bit inside, as soon as you see him turn your hips like this, his hips, you know exactly what he's going to do and where he'll be vulnerable and you cut over here. Right. And they can build pass patterns uh, like those things. They can tell quarterbacks what to look for to know which guy's going to be open before he normally would. So these are advantages that they can have. How effective will it be during the game? That remains to be seen because in college, you only have 20 hours in the week to be able to coach guys. In the NFL, you've got unlimited hours. You can get all that stuff in. So a lot of it will depend on how the Baylor players are able to assimilate that and, and execute it in the game. Okay, uh, Spencer's wearing the jersey, so we got to ask. People don't know, for those who don't know, you also cover the Washington football team with some, uh, you know, coverage there in Washington. So, Dax Milne, first catch in the NFL, draws a pass interference call as well. Uh, how is he developing as a receiver for Washington? They love Dax Milne. He got to play in this game a little bit more because of injuries at the receiver and tight end position. And so he was able to show what he showed in the preseason. In the preseason, when he had his opportunities, he made really good catches. He was reliable in being where he was supposed to be when he was supposed to be there. Good on special teams, energetic blocker when he didn't have the ball, all these things. So he has to go in and play against the Saints, and he gets the ball thrown his way, and he makes a fantastic catch on the boundary. And so doing that, coaches and quarterbacks will say, yeah, okay, well, gee, if we need to throw the ball to Dax, that's probably not a bad idea. And so little things like that are stepping stones, drop that ball, or just be a little bit out of bounds, and they don't have that positive validation. So I think Dax Miller is a complete football player. Uh, if you could add one more thing to it, you can take a tenth or two off of his 40 time. Either way, he's so precise in the way he runs routes that they know he is reliable, he is dependable, and that's why he made the team when some other guys that, that you know, reporters in D.C. thought would make it ahead of him did not. All right. Uh, as much as I want to keep talking about Dax Milne because he's my guy, Trevor, we do need to get a big picture question in about college football overall. The Cincinnati Bearcats are the first team in the history of the college football playoff era to have a top four ranking since we instituted that back in 2014. They're number three. Alabama loses. Georgia's the new number one. Iowa's number two after beating Penn State. What's happening at the top tiers of college football? It's nuts, Spencer. It's just completely nuts. Georgia is epic. I mean, their defense has a chance to be legendary. Alabama, we've seen some of the flaws that they've had. I mean, against better opponents this year up until Ole Miss, they were okay in the trenches. They weren't dominant in the trenches. Then they dominated Ole Miss, and I thought the Bama factor was back. Then they ran into a, a team that is <laughs> they shouldn't have done what they did to them. Texas A&M has a solid defense. Their offense not that good, but their offense looked like the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> against the Alabama defense. So teams that you expect to do well aren't the you know Clemson came into this season with one of the best defenses in the country, an offense that would be a work in progress. Well, the mistake there was that the offense isn't a work in progress. It's not working at all in any way. Right. Iowa at number two championship caliber defense. OK, offense, not a great offense. So even number two is not fully complete. I like Cincinnati better than I like Iowa. And so Oklahoma, same way. Oklahoma is number four, but Oklahoma's got all kinds of problems still on both sides of the ball. Yes. And so this is why there's so much chaos up at the top right now. The usual suspects that at this point are pulling away from everybody else for the four playoff spots are Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State. Oklahoma, Clemson, right? Those are the teams. And except for Georgia, every one of those teams is showing deep flaws right now, which opens the door for a lot of other teams. Love it. Love the chaos. Give me more of it. Trevor Maddich breaking it down better than anyone else can. We appreciate the time, Trevor. He is an Emmy award-winning national analyst. You want to give us another Jordan shrug? Uh there you go. <laughs> and, and you know what, Spencer? You got to get out to to send your send Dax Mills jersey back because he's got to go to practice. <laughs> I'll I'll throw it in the mail right now. Thanks, Trevor. Sign it for him though. Sign it for him. You got it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. ESPN's Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, coming up, BYU's now five and one. So now what? Why the Idaho State game, Jerem? A few weeks away, three. just became a critical matchup for BYU. Transitive properties at work. This is BYU Sports Nation.
If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. I think it's just really inspiring just seeing people help one another. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. I really like Studio C because we can all laugh together. It's actually something that makes us reconnect and brings us closer to our family. I love BYU TV. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. At further review, looks at the Boise State loss, previews the big Baylor game as Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, and David Nix break down the film. After further review, is tomorrow on the BYU TV app at 7 Eastern time. And this just in, the BYU at Washington State game on October 23rd will be on FS1 at 1.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Eastern. So, so apparently they are all in the afternoons now because Boise State's an afternoon game, Baylor's an afternoon game, and now Washington State's an afternoon game. And Idaho game. State on BYU. Idaho State's going to yeah. be in. Will Virginia be an afternoon yeah, game? We'll see, I, how, we'll see if I, BYU wins against Baylor, and then maybe they are. I honestly hope so. Here's why. Halloween Eve in Utah. Oh, yeah. Will, will we do it Saturday or actually on Sunday? Or you just do a trunk or treat. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> whenever you want. You and I like being with our kids for Halloween. Yes. And if there's a football game, it's tough. Absolutely. <laughs> he is Jeremiah M. Spencer. We want more Halloween candy. More this Halloween. is BYU Sports yeah. Nation. Yeah. Reminder, if you want to interact with the show at any point throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Are you surprised BYU remained a top 20 team after the win? A little bit. I thought BYU would fall to 20 or 21. I projected as much late on Saturday night when all of the college football games had finished. But they're a top 20 team still, which leads me to believe that not all is lost, Jerem. Much more on this later. BYU's not just playing for the Independence Bowl. Are you surprised? No. Um... B why should BYU drop 10 or 11 spots? Um, who did BYU lose to again? Oh, a name brand, Boise State. Was it a blowout? No, it was by nine. Has BYU defeated two and a half power five teams already? Yeah. BYU's a, a good team. Good to very good. Why would they drop, why would they drop that far? Well, they were, they were no. close to dropping out of the top 20. I mean, 19, it's borderline. and They were probably already also close to being 18. Our like, boy Dave yeah. Reardon from the Honolulu Star Advertiser had BYU unranked. What the heck, man? Matt Brown, however, the athletic had BYU as high as number 14. Yeah, no, one, sorry, is it about last week or is it about being 5-1 and one with three power That's what I like about the AP poll. It is a regression BYU to should, the mean. BYU should be in the top 20. There are enough yeah. votes that BYU is number 19. All right, number 19, BYU, and Samson Nakua made some noise early in the game against Boise State. If Samson's catch early in the game does not make the You Got Mossed segment on Monday Night Football Countdown, is Steve Young even doing his job, Jerem? Come on, Steve. You know, I don't think Steve controls this. This is a producer thing, but yeah. No, this should be on it. This should be on it tonight. That was a great catch by Samson Nakua, who immediately went to the, he's... He's too small. Yeah, sign. And then Puka Nakua, like, punches him in the face mask. Yeah. That's what brothers do. To punch each other in the face mask? That's what brothers do. I don't, I don't have a, well, I have a half brother. I've never punched him in the face mask. Oh, they bring such a needed element to this BYU football team. An edge, a swagger. Yeah. It's no, they've helped the a ton. Good yeah. to have the Nakuas. And Puka made an incredible one-handed catch earlier on that drive. Yes, he did. 
All of that going to be discussed in the film. Get it done, Steve. Let's go. After Alabama lost to Texas and m Reddit College Football tweeted the following. Idaho State, who entered the day winless, has a transitive win over Alabama. Idaho State greater than UC Davis, greater than Tulsa, greater than Memphis, greater than Mississippi State, greater than Texas and m greater than Alabama. The Idaho State game. <laughs> Live on BYU TV. Just become one of the toughest and most crucial games on the BYU. Team. Yes, if we're talking about transitive properties, absolutely. In reality, no. BYU is going to blow out Idaho State. Hopefully, when they're you. playing Idaho State, it's to compete for, at that point, win number nine in the schedule. And BYU is nine and one, and maybe a top 14 team, and really starting to flirt with that bigger picture conversation again. Every game matters. Every game's big. Hopefully BYU shows that and looks good against Idaho State. Yeah. All right. Uni swag. BYU at Baylor, and they're going with the white tops on the navy bottoms. What do you think of the white jerseys, navy pants look for BYU? And a navy helmet. Uh, I think after last week, people were hesitant about navy just because BYU lost. But, no, this looks really clean. I like it. Listen, I love what... The, the white in BYU's uniform looks really clean. Yep. And so does the navy with no tan. It looks nice. Also, is that mannequin like a size 24 waist? I, I don't Can know. Can we get a realistic waist on that mannequin? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's the, it's, uh, the cyborg, right? <laughs> the, the android. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I love the jerseys. I think the matte helmet's really cool. But if BYU loses this game, then fans are going to be calling <laughs> for the Navy, Navy helmets again. ever to come back yeah. ever again. More impressive, soccer going for six-plus goals for the sixth time this season. Holy schnecky. Or women's volleyball winning 27 straight sets. It, as wild as the 27 straight sets is for BYU volleyball, I kind of expect that uh, in a weird way, almost unfairly. The six-plus goals for the sixth time this season, that is a statistical anomaly. It's unbelievable. That, that to me, is more impressive. Yeah, I, I agree. Both crazy impressive. Uh, volleyball, we expect to win. I didn't expect you to sweep Utah. That's part of the streak. It's amazing, but, right? But the six-plus goal, that's, that's crazy. It's crazy. I told Jen, I said, the only bad thing about that is I have to try and make the game entertaining when it's like four to nothing with yeah. 20 minutes to go. That's the only bad well, thing. Well, and what if BYU only scores two goals in a game now? It's like, ah, oh, are they underperforming? At halftime, it was two nothing. We were like, oh, I don't know what's it's going on. It could get weird. Coming up, October 11th, the significance of this day. And so now what for BYU football after the loss to Boise State? Is it just about getting to the Independence Bowl? Or is there really something more there potentially? This is BYU Sports Nation. Woohoo, five and one. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing. Or, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
BYU football with Clint Stocky airs tomorrow on the BYU TV app. Boise State recap, Baylor preview. Hi, huh, Baylor, what's up? You're crying, turkey tail. Nakua Brothers in the latest Deep Blue, Puka Nakua, specifically in the film room, 8.30 Eastern, Tuesday night on the BYU TV app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B on a busy Monday. BYU football number 19 in the latest AP poll, number 20 in the latest coaches poll. They are 5-1, and one, three Power 5 wins coming off a loss to Boise State. And after the loss to Boise State on Saturday, Jerem, I saw on Twitter from several national analysts, notably Brett McMurphy, Chris Vanini, and Pete Thamel, that now they think BYU's New Year's Six chances are done. Like, it's over. BYU is now playing for the Independence Bowl, even if they finish 11-1. and one. With BYU at 5-1 and one, and still six games remaining, four Power 5 opponents remaining on the schedule, what is BYU playing for? Now what? Well, I'd like to look at the first six games. So it's reasonable to think and assume that before the season, we thought BYU would lose at least one of the first six, right? Yep. Pick your game that BYU was going to lose. Which one do you want BYU to have lost? I don't want BYU to have lost any, but right. if, if I could pick one. But they one, were going to lose one. May, at least one. You know, may, Probably against the Power 5 opponent, right? So Arizona State, you would take away the best win this season. No, right? I, I wouldn't. You know what I mean? But Utah, obviously, you want the streak to end. Yep. You don't want to lose to Arizona. They stink. BYU was going to lose one of these games. You don't want it to be Utah State or South Florida. I would argue that the most acceptable loss of all, all of them is Boise Maybe State. Maybe this is the one. Okay? So rewind to August. I tell you, BYU's 5-1. And, and number 19 and in the, the country. And, and number 19. And beat Utah. And beat Arizona State. And beat Arizona. And beat Utah State. Are you happy? Yes. I would argue you are not happy. You are more than happy. You are ecstatic. You're thrilled. You are stoked. Right now we're feeling the annoyance and uh, sadness of the current loss. That's okay. That's normal. That's natural. And how they lost Things the game Things are going into that. really well. Okay. BYU's going to the freaking Big 12 in oh, two years, too. And, th- and there's this, too. Life is amazing. It's okay. It's going to be all right. There's this, too. BYU's played three quarterbacks, and they're 5-1 and one oh, and number 19. Way. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Everything's fine. Okay? Everything. Listen, I know it's disappointing to lose to Boise State. Yep. If you, th- <laughs> if you thought BYU was going to go 6-0, and oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. I'm talking before the season, not like last week. We thought that was a reasonable ask. Now, I, this is the acceptance portion, right, of this, uh, you know, the stages of grief. It's okay. Now, if BYU loses to Baylor and then stumbles after that against Wazoo, ah, oh, BYU's in a very different place, right, than they were when it was 5-0. and Why, this is a, cri- it's a critical time. This is a critical time. game. It's a critical time. And I would argue that, B- you know, BYU's, uh, you know, you talk about the likely mm-hmm. losses left. This Saturday is a likely They're loss. a three-point underdog, yeah. according to our friends in the desert. You always got to bring it. They really got to bring it. Um, so, yeah, five and one and ranked. I'm Bro, I'm happy. Listen, if BYU loses, they fall out of the top 25. That's no fun. But five and two is still ahead of schedule. <laughs> I would argue through seven, we would have taken four and three before the season. We would have. Five and two is really good. BYU as a top 20 team. Six and one is better. At five and one, maybe it takes the frustration of a Boise State loss to refocus, recenter, and go and play what we hope is their best game of the season on the road at Baylor. The complete we'll game see. that we have yet to see. Exactly. And and that also is another factor. BYU has not played a complete game yet, and they're five and one and still a top twenty team. Yeah. Is BYU are they good enough to bounce back? And go win what we think is the toughest game remaining on the schedule. I, I love the setup. I think BYU, I think BYU is. Jaron Hall certainly got to play better. He did not play very well on Saturday. He's not fully healthy. A, a, a tweet. Uh, Brian Turner. To fully blame the loss on turnovers without pointing to Hall's pitiful performance, bad passing, lack of his ever-touted superior running is disingenuous. One, he, he has a rib injury. Why would he run a ton? That's, that's a dumb idea. And then two, we're not fully blaming the loss on turnovers. There were other factors. I'm just saying the number one factor was turnovers. Absolutely, that was the most prominent factor in the game. Come we're on. Not, not, Come not, on. We're not saying there's nothing else. No, there okay. were some untimely, uh, awful penalties as well. If you had a rib injury, you could barely sleep, let alone run. Okay? Have you had a rib? I've had a bruised rib before. Dude. Doesn't feel good. One of the worst things ever. It's terrible. Okay, so everybody's got to get better. And Trevor Maddox pointed out, Hopefully, Jaron Hall has shaken off the cobwebs. James Empey doesn't have uncharacteristic mistakes, sure. and there aren't some other un- untimely penalties. Opini's holding on to the ball. Okay, 
So maybe everybody gets better. Maybe this is the reality check, the hard reset the BYU needs to go and win the toughest game, we think, remaining on the schedule. 2018. Which would, I mean, it would totally re- at, it would recenter everything. BYU w- loses to Cal at home 17-14. 17-14? Uh, no, that was UCLA 2016. They lose to Cal at home. It was disappointing. BYU then goes to Wisconsin and wins. At the time, we argued that was the cost to get that sure. win because it reset BYU and the expectation from the other team was different. We said the same I thing wonder, about... Yes, like you're saying, I wonder if the sacrifice to beat Baylor was to lose to Boise State. We'll see. We said the same thing about BYU losing to a terrible South Florida team in 2019 to come home and beat number 14 Boise State. Right. Maybe that. Maybe it took the frustration bottoming out to get BYU to recalibrate and refocus. And I would and take that, that a million percent. Sure, like, sure. if BYU can beat Baylor and be 6-1, and one, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Then, then the Cougars are back in the national conversation. And I appreciate Chris Vanini and Brett McMurphy and Pete Dammel. Those guys are prominent voices in the college football media community. But to say that BYU has no shot at the New Year's Six with what's remaining on the schedule for the Cougars... I think is very short-sighted. Those BYU's shots, still weird. a top 20 they team. They just have a less of a shot. They're number 19, and they have games against Baylor, USC, Virginia, Washington State remaining. If BYU is 7-0 and against the Power 5 teams and finish 11-1, and and they're number 19, and they only climb from here on out, they'll be a top 10 team at the end of the season. Yeah. With all the chaos that's happening, uh, What? If BYU is a top 10 team and they went out, they will absolutely be in the New Year's Six conversation. Way too oh, early yeah, to call them out. Way too yeah. early to call will them out. Will they actually of it. make it? That'll be different. But yeah. You're saying that they have no chance. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Super short sighted. Okay, coming up, the prop pick recap. And why October 11th may be the most important single day in BYU athletics history. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Sometimes you just have to tell yourself you're going to do it and hit it head on. For them just to be by my side through the whole thing is incredible. We're going to build each other up. It's about family, about getting all of us across. He will never be alone again. He has us. Never had home run. Yeah, I got it. For the last time. You still with me? Yes. Yeah. That's our job. You gotta take care of the football and move the team down the field and get the ball in the end zone. They're just raising the level of play of everybody around them. And we're moving forward, so hopefully things stick. If you're a fan of BYU football, then you can't miss Coordinator's Corner. Join host Greg Rebell as he interviews BYU's football coordinators. Coordinator's Corner, live on BYU TV or on the BYU TV app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. On this week's Steve Blue podcast, to talk with 18-year NFL veteran, legendary Cougar Lee Johnson, a.k.a. Thunderfoot, about that nickname, being teammates with Jim McMahon, Steve Young, and Tom Brady, kicking barefoot, and more. Listen on the BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. And uh, like you said, Jeremy, download the podcast if you can't listen to us live, right? That. It's, it's that simple. Okay, it's time to get to our prop pick recap from Boise State at BYU. Going into the week, you and I were tied at one apiece. Brian Logan had a win somehow. 
Then there was Ooh. one tie. Oh yeah, Brian. Yeah, and we forgot to do them during the Utah game because it was Big 12 week. We didn't forget. We uh, chose Avoided to do it. the Big 12. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right, number one. More Ryan Rico 60 plus yard punts or Isaac Rex touchdown catches. Neither happened. Neither happened, so no points awarded. I would, and may God have mercy on your soul. Number two, whether it be more sacks or turnover and turnovers by the defense or offensive touchdowns for BYU. No points as the defense had one uh, on this one. One sack, no forced turnovers, BYU. Uh, offense scored offense two scored touchdowns. Offense scored two. So it was two touchdowns on offense. We both picked we, defense. We both missed on that. Yeah. No points. Classic. All right, it all comes down to the final pick of the time and quarter of BYU's first score which happened with 10 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter on a Jake Oldroyd field goal, giving you, Jerem, who said it would be 9.52 remaining in the first quarter. Yeah. You get the win. You were only 32, 32 seconds. seconds off. Well oh, done. All right, new tally. Jerem has two. I have one. Brian Logan has one. And there's still one tie. It's going really well. <laughs> Distribution, right? It's evenly distributed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody feels good. Gets a ribbon. Let's go. <laughs> Our question of the oh, day, no. where are you in the five stages of grief after BYU lost where to Boise are you? State? Are we both in acceptance? Absolutely acceptance. We're in acceptance. Yes. Yeah. I'm absolutely. I was going through many of the stages of grief throughout the game. Like I was in denial yeah. in the third quarter. I never bargained. <laughs> I just skipped that one. But Or maybe I'm bargaining with the fans on like, no, five and one's fine. Yeah. And I don't. I don't really feel a lot of. Anger? I, I think that... Uh, I did Saturday. You know? Yeah. Eh, yeah all good. Uh, upset at the fumbles. Yeah. yeah. Sad for sure, but yeah. I'm absolutely in acceptance. Okay. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Cougar A70 says, if the TV could talk, it would attest to f the first three stages. Fortunately, the remote didn't shatter. <laughs> this tweet due to number four, but BYU Sports Nation brought me quickly into acceptance. Okay. 11 and 1. Okay. Polishing my blue goggles. Blue alert. On blue to Waco. Goggle alert. Blue goggle alert. On to Waco. Blue goggle yeah. alert. Love it. It's not Waco. Um, today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Hey, happy birthday to Steve Young and Lavelle Edwards. Awesome. And then yesterday to Kalani Sitake. And uh, BYU recruiting continues to crush it. So, some notable birthdays over the weekend. How about that? Yeah, you betcha. Hey, look at, look at Kalani's Kalani frosted the uh, uh, hair there, man. We should ask him about that. Listen, late 90s, Eminem's, <laughs> Marshall Mathers, the whole deal, you know. The bleach blonde hair, Travis, Travis Hansen. Hansen, Elder mm -hmm. 8 Mile. I get it. Yeah, happy birthday to Lavelle. He would have been uh, 91, I think. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, monumental day in BYU athletics history, the day Lavelle Edwards was born. And Steve Young, you know, the greatest quarterback to ever come out of this place, Pro Football Hall of Famer, right? The only BYU Yep. Pro Football Hall of Famer. And so. he'll remain in that category unless he forgets to include Samson Nakua tonight on Monday Night Countdown. Exactly. And <laughs> Steve was chanting beat L.A. at the San Francisco Giants game yeah. with Jerry Rice. And I was like, what about all those checks from the L.A. Express, Steve? <laughs> Did you forget about those? He's a San Francisco bucks, 40 guy. Years. He's a Bay Area guy. I know. I'm just playing. All right. Thanks to today's guest, ESPN's Trevor Maddich. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. Uh, Dennis still d doing stuff? Uh, we ran out of time. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to KJ Hall. Coordinators Corner, Greg Rubel, and uh, the coordinators from BYU Football. Up next on BYU TV, there's Ed Lamb. Big questions, big conversations to be had there. Jerem, are you in acceptance mode? Yeah. You there? You there? Oh, yeah. I, I was yelling about 5-1 being good. Beat Baylor, baby. Yeah, beat Baylor. Let's go. And go Cougs. Cross the 50.